understand the needs of disabled persons. Um, like was said, it's not only disabled persons that will benefit from this, but everyone in society. And once um, there is connectivity, once there is a built environment, you'll see more disabled persons on wheelchair coming up. After that, you'll see elderly persons becoming more comfortable in using the wheelchair to come up, and they too will come up. Because most of the time, these people are stuck at home. They dare not come up. Because they don't know whether or not when they come up, it'll be safe. They don't know whether it's going to be possible. So rather than try, don't try. Lah. Okay? And you'll see eventually over time, disabled persons, especially the more severe, converting their wheelchairs to motorized wheelchairs and coming up and joining mainstream activities, being able to take the public transport. And that's where it is really being alive. Previously, you're just breathing, but there's no purpose in life. Everyone needs a purpose in life to say that, hey, I want to be alive and I can do things because I can and nothing stops me. So for the first start, the built environment is something that will encourage people to come out and want to come out because they know that it's safe to come out. So when everyone is happy to come out, there is motivation and everyone is out to live a life and enjoying themselves at it. I was asked just now, what motivates me? When I was much younger, my parents motivated me and said that nothing is impossible. I may be disabled. Okay, but nothing is impossible if you put your mind to it. But when I came out and grew older, I realized that what made it impossible was the environment. The environment was something that says, no, you cannot. But I was quite lucky. You see me on the wheelchair today, but I, I can actually walk. But I only stand this tall, shorter than Benny. Okay? And a lot of things were not in my reach. And after a while, you get very tired walking. So when there were drains, there were steps, I'll just climb up. But when Singapore became more accessible, and I became older and easier to walk, because it was very tiring, the wheelchair actually helped me to move a lot faster and be up close. At least when I speak to a person now, I'm not here, they're not looking at yes, you know, that sort of thing, right? And it becomes like, hey, people are no longer looking at you because of your disability, but because of your ability. I think that's where we all should head towards, okay? Looking at the individual, their ability, and providing the opportunity to do so. And in a built environment, you be able to do things that you want to do, able to let you go to school, go to work, play. We also love to play, okay? Um, yeah, and live life just like everybody else. So I'd like to thank all of you who participated today. Yeah, we gave you an opportunity to be in our shoes for a few minutes in the day. But if you can make life more fun for us throughout our life, that would be wonderful, really, really wonderful. And so, um, yeah, budgets and everything else aside, as long as we get the money to do it, we do it right, we do it correctly, rather than going to go back and change it just because we got it wrong, that means more money to be spent. I'd like to ask those who have had experience using the wheelchair um, to say something first before I conclude any okay, share. I think this is a good opportunity where we can all share the morning's experience, see what was the learning experience. Who wants to start? <laughs> and then you need to actually learn to have some skill in you know, order, especially uh, our our this uh, ram and all that uh, not maintained properly or not designed properly. So you actually need some skill before. If not, you'll topple over. And then I also find that along these ways, I think if we have trees, uh, it will make the journey much more uh, enjoyable and uh, uh, more, more disabled friendly uh, and then people will actually take the trouble to move a lot because in the hot sun and especially you're battling the more you sweat more than uh, you, you travel of course you know we i've been to st nicholas we've uh, interacted with the people there sometimes you think people are born, born blind but sometimes they become blind in your 40s or 50s because of illness and then you realize that um, you know blindness is a very terrifying thing when you move about without knowing uh, what you will meet uh, or what you will not be to so i think you know it, it's awareness uh, awareness as builders that we need to cater for people and also on the share bomb something that's more personal. My late mother-in-law, she had a series of strokes, so she started off on a walker and then in a wheelchair.
chain and later on she was totally invalid. Uh, and my daughter, four or five years ago in Singapore, she came down with ear infection and she couldn't get up and she had to go out in the wheelchair in the last two days of our holiday. So then we realized that if you don't have uh, wheelchair friendly things, it, 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 it can become something that will affect your own family one day and yourself as well. Yeah. Thanks. This is my actually my second time uh, dealing with a program like this. It was the first time I think around 10 years ago. Uh, before that, we are not uh, really have these facilities in the in the town in the city. But last time when we we had the uh, walkabout like this and with Mr. Tan Kwan Ao, uh, and then uh, we had we already did some inner city uh, project and we provide. And uh, the lesson that I uh, have today that just by providing is not enough. I mean, we thought we, last time zero, then we provide. When people ask, uh, do you have the OKU friendly? Say yes, we have the we have the RAM, we have this, we have that. But to me, after experience, it's not enough. We have to look into more detail the design. And to me, I feel that in in future project, if to look into the detail, then we have to involve you all. Because when I uh, uh, on the wheelchair, I think if, if I know a uh, few friends, Jonathan and the I think I will topple behind two times. Okay. You know, and, and one thing about the curve, you know, and then the material. Sometimes we say, that, yeah, we have a lower curve. We used to say, yeah, it's lower curve, but the material also is is, is uh, matters. It's like the you know the stone, the round round stone. Maybe I also want to ask if we want to change that. What type of material should be more suitable? Maybe it's less expensive and concrete. Then another thing is about the involvement, involvement with you all when at the beginning, yes. at the beginning when we draw the, the, the layout, uh, at the plan, so maybe we can show you, we thought that oh, one slope, one is to 12, one is to 12, uh, the slope is okay. But I think the way they do it also, how the contractor yeah. do it, it, yeah, it's one twelve, but it's still steep, <laughs> you know, and the material they use, it push you behind, so that right. is the thing that I, I, I learned from the journey today, it's more the awareness. Uh, and, and in terms of the planning part. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, it's a very good, it's a practical experience and good experience. Um, I think we owe you so much love. Uh, we have do it. So uh, we owe our uh, a fellow colleagues uh, from this BBT and also with uh, our YB also. I think uh, we we are more committed now to, to uh, provide this uh, facility in terms of the uh, building control to give you a better accessibility and connectivity in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, it's a very good experience for me. Uh, I think uh, my department, uh, there will be a lot of things to do. La. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, today we, we, we have gone through uh, the roads uh, where a lot of things have been done. Uh, it? So, uh, but the only thing is the budget. <laughs> what I worry is uh, because our, we have a limited budget, so it may be. We, we may achieve it uh, in a in stages, in stages yes, la, in not stages. not uh, in uh, say in year, one year's time. Uh, we have to do it over stretch over a few years. Don't worry, because in any country, stretch over a few years. Yeah, yeah don't worry. Okay. But you're anyway. getting there, you're getting it correct. That's what we're talking about. Okay, uh, anyway, it's a good experience for me. We'll definitely look into it. Actually, we have restarted, my department has restarted, but uh, slowly, la, not, uh, not so effective. Yeah. I think slowly we'll, we'll achieve it. Uh, okay. Yeah, but not too slow, also. Uh. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, what Mr. Ku said, we have started. But from the uh, talk about, we know that doing is one thing, enforcement is another thing. I think uh, we, we came across a lot of illegal block, blocking of the walkway, you know, prevent the, uh, you know, the OKU from using the RAM, all these things. I think enforcement is also very important. So we need to actually get the cooperation of 